Good morning, Pastor. Pastor, uh, just a question. Uh, do we know the uh, groups who propagate uh, exclusivism? Well, evangelicals, historic evangelicalism, uh, should be exclusivist historically. But unfortunately, many evangelicals now are uh, giving way to the pressure and many are becoming inclusivist. Inclusivist uh, like Michael Green and uh, to a certain extent even uh, uh, I mean Clark Pinnock. Uh, these are in inclusivists but exclusivists are those who still maintain the historic evangelical faith. So Reformed Christians, fundamentalists, evangelicals who are true to their historic a stream should be exclusivist. I love question, Pastor. Uh, so, if uh, uh, evangelicals uh, who holds the exclusivism, uh, pwede po bang malilang yung pagkakaintindi sa kanila na ini na uh, other than the Christian uh, religion or faith, uh, eh hindi uh, makakasama or makaka uh, nakakapaloob dun sa salvation na ng, ng, ng Panginoong Yeso Cristo. No, it can be stated or it can be presented wrongly and for example, many fundamentalists who whose message is more bent on fire and brimstone preaching almost wanting people to go to hell if they don't accept their faith. Uh, uh, that can be presented wrongly. That is why whatever exclusivism we profess, I said, must be held uh, side by side with the inclusivism of our mission. That we want people to become disciples and that uh, the Bible is quite clear on God wanting all, desiring all men to be saved, not wanting that any should perish. So we uh, advance those propositions along with uh, exclusive claims but with inclusive desire to see people saved. Unfortunately, there are some exclusivists that are also uh, excluding and this is the unfortunate uh, sense that many make of exclusivism that they want to exclude. As a matter of fact, we want to include them but there is a way for inclusion. And that is what we will see in positive assertion after the break from Joshua. Uh, uh, how should we show the absurdities of relativism as well as plural, pluralism to this who have those uh, worldviews? Well, as I've said, the absurdity is it's the, the philosophy behind it is self-defeating. Uh, if every religion is legitimate, then is the Christian claim legitimate that if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you will be damned? Uh, that's a Christian message. And that yet they are saying it is legitimate. And then here is another that says uh, that salvation is universalist, that everyone, in fact, Barsian universalism holds that even the demons will be saved, will be redeemed. Uh, so. You have here contradictory truths, and yet if every, every proposition is legitimate, then how do you, uh, how do you apply that? Uh, there, these are absurdities. And we do not, uh, one way also of showing the absurdity is that we do not apply that to ordinary things. You do not say that every food is legitimate, every direction is legitimate, every uh, Every thing that we have to contend with is legitimate. We necessarily choose because there are right ways and wrong ways. Uh, there may be healthy food and toxic foods. And we do not apply that to ordinary things. And yet on matters of eternity, uh, that is often advanced. From Pao, uh, should a member of a church ask permission to their pastor if he's decided to study other religions, especially if the member is still not mature enough spiritually. As I've said, comparative religion, religions is a valid discipline. And if that is part, for example, of his curriculum in school, let's say studying sociology, 
and that will be part of the study uh, why would you prevent that but guide him uh, guide him accordingly uh, based on the exclusive claims of uh, the Christian faith. In fact, you can make use of what he knows of other religions to also make others know how they can share their faith more effectively. Ayo. Morning po, Pastor. Uh, dito po sa Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, saying that, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Is this pertaining to the pluralism in that time, Pastor? Or well, it's referring to the Judaizers in Galatia uh, who were subverting the apostolic gospel by suggesting that uh, Gentile believers should become Jews. That's the immediate application. But now you can apply this to any other gospel because Paul makes it any other gospel than that which the apostles have preached. So there's, a, there's only one saving gospel. And then when he says, let him be accursed, he's not wishing curse. He's not invoking curse on them. It is simply recognizing that such people already are under God's curse. So it's not that he is cursing them, that, but he is recognizing if you preach a gospel that subverts the apostolic gospel, you're already under God's curse. Danny. Uh, Pastor, uh, in relation and sa mga uh, question regarding sa postmodernism, uh, can we teach sa mga uh, unbeliever na attender natin sa church yung uh, about the uh, Christian apologetics? Oh, it's a, it's a good uh, lesson for as long as the teacher uh, knows his subject because if he is not good with apologetics, uh, then he might make a mess of the situation. He may he might make it worse. For unbelievers who may want to listen uh, honestly and sincerely, but there are apologists I have heard who do not know what they are teaching, and uh, it's often just uh, contemptuous of other positions, and that's not the way to do it. But apologetics is a good subject. In fact, that's part of our curriculum. Other questions? Mon? Pastor, follow up ulit dun sa tanong ko. Uh, so, in the case of extreme um, exclusivism, uh, can we say that there are extreme exclusivists? Yes, uh, extreme exclusivists in the sense of uh, presenting it wrongly, being contemptuous, being almost a quote-unquote a go-to-hell kind of preaching, damning, uh, on, uh, judgmental preaching. Uh, so there are extremist ways of presenting exclusivism. And the way to temper that exclusivism is always join it to that inclusivism of our desire for all to be saved. Not the inclusivism of philosophy, uh, but the inclusivism of missionary desire. 